Hello, goblin children, and welcome to another episode of Fantasy News. I am your disheveled goblin host, Daniel Green, and today we have a smacklin' of fantasy news. Let's go ahead and get into it. But Daniel, what qualifies as a smackalin? What does it mean? I'll tell you an anniversary edition of Leviathan Wakes sure does. And that's right, we're gonna go ahead and get the 10th anniversary edition of the first book in the Expanse series. It does seem to be heavily inspired by that that copy of Dune and its anniversary edition with the fringing, highlight colors, art, and big old title names. And may I just say, I am excited to see they have decided to keep the title of the book larger than the author name, and I just hope if they continue with these anniversary editions, they decide not to randomly and arbitrarily change it so it's not consistent and suddenly have the author name. That'd be really great, I'd appreciate that! Daniel, when will you stop complaining? I'll stop complaining when they fix it and I get sent free copies, then I will stop complaining. But in the next piece of well-known sci-fi fantasy author news, the upcoming Tad Williams release has apparently been split into two novels because it was just too dang large for one. And because of that, the first part might be coming sooner than you think. That's right, the now book three of the planned quadrilogy is titled Narrow Dark. And the second upcoming book, the fourth in this Tad Williams series, is retaining the original name of the Navigator's Chief. Children. Ooh, but you can expect, but you can expect Narrow Dark to be released in what appears to be spring of 2022. But let's go ahead and just burn through the rest of this hardcore fantasy news with the fact that we have Kevin J. Anders' Gods and Dragons cover reveal. The third book in the Wake the Dragon series may, okay, I want to take a, take a shot, may, let me double check the math. If we, if we go ahead and we add in the cover name, you know, the, the gods and dragons, and we add in the series name of Wake of the Dragons, okay, and then the, the sword on the cover with a drag, okay, there's the dragon there too, and then the font choice, if we, if we add that, if we add these all, okay, let me just, I'm gonna triple check. I'm gonna triple check that. Let me triple check. Okay, if we divide the dragon by the sword on the cover, add in the series name, and then multiply by this actual font choice. And then we take into consideration that Tor is putting it out, and. Yep, this is epic fantasy. Next news! Now, in a story that's near and dear to my heart. Emojipedia is officially adding in a possible troll emoji. Now, you're probably thinking, why does this matter? Why do we need a troll emoji? Cause it gets us closer to a goblin emoji. I want, I want an official Tolkien inspired. I know we got this guy, but I want the official Tolkien inspired goblin emoji. That would mean a lot to me personally. And this troll design, I'm a fan of it. So it's draft only now. It may be approved, and if it is, it should be available on most platforms by middle of 2022. Fantasy's taken over the world through emojims. Now, I'm afraid to bring you this next piece of news because it confirms our worst fears about season two of The Witcher. I need you to have all small children leave the room. I need them out. They can't handle, no one but adults should be here for this. But Henry Cavill has confirmed that there will need no bathtub scene in Witcher season two with Geralt. <gasps> Henry Cavill tried to make up for this travesty by saying, don't worry, there will be plenty of man flesh to be observed. Henry, if you're not in a bathtub, I don't care, okay? It's not about you. It's about the character's soul, and the soul of Geralt can be found in the tub. God! I'm kidding, but for some reason I am actually disappointed by that. What's wrong with me? I do want to, of course, add this was a joke. No actor should ever be pressured by fans to appear nude in any way, shape, or form they are not explicitly comfortable with. I don't know if this was about Henry Cavill being comfortable or not, or just the writing, but either way, just wanted to add that because I know there are people online who will try and quote me as like an actual person who's upset, but no, I'm not weird. Now, do you want to be tantalized, surprised, and shocked all at once? This story probably won't do all of those things, but it might do one of them, and that's the fact that One Piece officially has 490 million copies in circulation. With a thousand chapters, 
That's still a lot. That's a fucking lot. What? The number consists of 400 million copies in circulation in Japan alone and another 90 million copies in the rest of the world. I had no idea Japan liked One Piece that much. I want half a billion more. But as someone who's currently enjoying the series, I may say myself, click clack clickety clack apparently. But Luff Luff and Zoro and Numinam and Rubin are officially apparently some of the best-selling characters in literature as they're coming ever closer to half a billion copies sold. Wow. But before we get into the next story, a quick word from today's sponsor. What do you and Bob the Builder have in common? You want to get it built. That's right, you and Bob the Builder are trying to build a fantasy world where you can make your dreams come true. Get that novel out of your brain. Any kind of creative limit does not apply to your ambitions. Let's get that clear. You can do whatever your mind is set on and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. But how can you get from point A to Z? Just a little, little, little bit easier. I'll tell you how by going to Campfire and signing up with their amazing choose your own price model and downloading tools that can speed along the process to help you join Bob the Builder and just <laughs> building whatever needs to get done. My mic's now not facing the right way. There we go, that's good enough. There's so many tools in this box. Character organizers, timelines, maybe a PB&J recipe. Don't know for sure that's there, but it might be. Things to get you from broad concepts to specific rooms and buildings level world building done right. So click the link in the description and sign up today. Bah! All right, let's get into some D&D fantasy news. We have a trailer drop for the upcoming Fizzben's Treasury of Dragons. And this is going to be an expansion to D&D that's going to add many dragon-related subclasses and stuff. It's basically just a very dragon-heavy addition to Dungeons and Dragoons. And as is unavoidable in the world like death and taxes on fantasy news here, we must discuss fantasy sci-fi adaptation show budgets, specifically around The Last of Us adaptation coming over at HBO, because it has been confirmed that we will have well over a million dollars per episode level budget. This may not seem like an absolutely crazy amount of money, especially when you compare it to things like what we're seeing around the Lord of the Rings show, Wheel of Time, even some of like Game of Thrones season stuff. Mandalorian, but I also found the headline in this article to be a bit misleading because it implies it's going to be like only about a million per episode. But if you look at the actual quotes, what we have here is something that seems to be far exceeding that eight figure sum per episode. So we don't know officially yet, but it's going to be pretty big. Big big boo big big ba if you ask me. We also had two super dope Wheel of Time stories drop. One around the fact that we have a new director named Thomas Napper coming into play, and the second that season two has started filming already. And we're going to finish off fantasy news today by talking about the announced two more animated shows coming. <sighs> <laughs> for the Game of Thrones franchise. That's right. Two more animated shows are being worked on for Game of Thrones. I, I have a very specific way to put this for this franchise. It's dead. The cow's dead. You shot the cow. You walked out in the field with a shotgun and your showrunners executed the cow in horrific, brutal fashion. That's... That's what this feels like to me, a little bit. And what we've already seen with some of the spins off for Game of Thrones are already having trouble or being canceled before they're even out the gate. I don't have a lot of hope for seeing both of these. Maybe one, but not both. I'd love to see this franchise make a comeback and have some form of redemption, but it's just seeming weird and wrong. And with people getting very excited for these upcoming fantasy adaptations and the, you know, decent success of some of the successors of Game of Thrones, I see it having a very steep uphill battle to win, having already stabbed so many of the fans in such an intimate way. Just like, you know, one specific stabbing I won't get into because spoilers, are we not spoiling season eight without warning yet? I won't say it here, but like, I feel like it's been long enough. 
but I won't. Anyway, this has been your latest episode of Fantasy News. Like and subscribe if you have not already, and hit the Patreon if you'd like to support what I do here. Join the Discord server and post any stories like see covered in the Fantasy News channel, and have a good one, y'all. Peace. And I'd like to record a special shout out to my latest high tier Patreon, Christopher Montgomery. Damn. Uh.